Joining us now is the executive director of the Advancement Project, which works to combat structural racism in education, voting, policing, criminal justice, and immigration. Welcome in Judith Brown Dianis. Hi, thanks for having me today. Thank you for coming, we really appreciate having you here. And also we have recently welcomed in a new administration into Washington, which is so great. And it was by way of an election that was unfortunately laden with all sorts of tomfoolery. Not to mention there was effectively a poll tax going on in Florida that the courts upheld. You know, what efforts does the advancement project undertake to really address voter protections and preserve voter rights? Sure, so Advancement Project, we opened our doors in 99 and then the 2000 election happened and the debacle in Florida made us say, okay, that as we are building power across the country for communities of color, voting is important. And so we started to, that was the first time that I think our country, you know, we've been through voter suppression, but it was like this new wave of what was happening and we really needed to fix the cracks in our democracy. So the way that we work is we support support grassroots organizations on the ground who are building power, who are doing things like voter registration, but also doing GOTV. And so we often wind up suing some of the election officials who are either um, who are making all these small little changes that people don't know that go under the radar. So we end up suing them sometimes and state legislatures because we have seen a wave of voter suppression laws that have passed in states. And I think we're gonna see more of this as, as our country's demographics change. And the browning of America is making those who have had power want to continue to hold the power. And the way that they try and do that is through voter suppression. And so we often end up suing, but we also to do a lot of work around GOTV and voter education. Yeah, and I'm quite certain that is very powerful because voter disenfranchisement and the many avenues by which it operates, hey, it's a bad thing and it's a big thing. You know, as of 2020, there was some 5.2 million people who were disenfranchised due to felony convictions, and that's right. according to the sentencing project. And also speaking of felonies, you know, more than 2 million people are currently incarcerated right now in the United States. And that includes a disproportionate number of people of color. And now we see that the Biden administration has agreed to phase out the federal government's use of privately operated prisons. Mm -hmm. And given your organization's work on the just with its justice project, what are your thoughts on this change that the Biden administration is making? Well, I mean, in actuality, (laughs) that change is to basically a reset. It's rewinding the tape back to the Obama administration who had done that. And and we have to give, you know, pay attention and give a a lot of applause to uh, our movement that really pushed for that in the first place. But, you know, now we're going to, we're going to go back to where we were um, because Trump got rid of, um, got rid of that. And so we're back at square one. And so square one, is not good enough, right? And so, because most people are in public prisons, right? That they're not in these profiteering prisons, but they are in public prisons. And so that is the work that we have to do. Because if we wanna end mass incarceration, we can't just say, uh, we'll go after the private prisons. The other issue with what was done, and again, while it's a first step, didn't go far enough, is that it maintains the contracts with private prisons that detain undocumented people. And so that means that the immigration detention centers, those contracts will stay in place. And so, you know, this is one of those lessons where we get some wins as a movement, but that doesn't mean that our work is over, right? We elected Biden, but that doesn't mean our work is over, that we have to continue to do the work to push them to do more because our people deserve more. Absolutely, we have to move past this returning to the status quo. I completely and totally agree with you. And I was wondering when it comes to changes, what changes are the advancement project really hopeful for? Well, you know, one of the things that we're hopeful for is because we have Democrats in in Congress and in control of Congress and we have a Democrat in charge of the White House is that first of all, passing the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, all right? Like this is something that should not be controversial because we need to have voting rights protections and it passed the House before. Mitch McConnell wouldn't put it 
before the Senate. So now we're going to see that finally move and President Biden is going to be able to sign off on that. The other thing that we're going to be looking to do is in the police reform area. You know, what we saw as a bill, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act for Advancement Project, it doesn't go far enough. So one of the things that we really will be looking to do is number one, take care of qualified immunity that shields police officers from liability for what they do because that creates a bad culture with police so that they know that they can get away with anything. So we will be um, you know, in a, we'll, we will be uh, all on board with that part of the bill. But we do think that um, we need to go farther and that uh, the president is, is saying $300 million more for law enforcement. And we don't want that. We want that money put into mental health services. We want that money put into supports for community, into housing, into programs for reentry. So, so those are some of the things that we'll be looking for along with immigration and also um, getting police out of schools. That's one of our, our key pieces of work at Advancement Project. Absolutely. And speaking of schools, you know, I know that education justice is one of the advancement projects focal points. And we know that community, communities of color and those living in poverty are often denied access to quality public education, whether it's underfunding or under resourced. But also a recent federal report revealed that one out of every four schools in America was classified as high poverty. This is a problem. And so I was wondering what efforts would you like to see undertaken to address equity in education? Well, I mean, a couple of things. One is that we're very concerned about young people returning to schools after COVID, right? Or even during COVID, right? Like, the like kids are going back to school, and we know that a lot of schools are under resourced, don't even have things like sanitizer and soap. And so there really has to be a Marshall plan for our schools, but also for um, mental health support. These kids have gone through a lot of trauma. And so they can't, we can't just send them back to school and act like everything's okay. They've been isolated, some of them living in really bad environments. So we want to make sure that young people get those supports. Also, the money that goes to high poverty schools, which is called Title I money, we need to see increases in that because we know we have a lot of kids who are suffering, who need free lunch and a good breakfast, but they also need supports in school. And so that's the kind of stuff we'll be pushing. But I'll tell you this, it's so good to have finally an administration and probably a secretary of education that cares about public schools because that's not what we have for the past four years. So we'll be out, we'll be pushing them to do the best by our kids. Absolutely, and it's uh, yes, uh, you couldn't have said it any mm -hmm. better, uh, Betsy DeVos. Uh, it was funny because what she was one of the few effective members of the Trump administration, and mm -hmm. boy, it would have been great not to have her. That's but right. we don't <laughs> have her now, so we are very blessed in that mm -hmm. regard. And so we have just a few minutes left, and so I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about anything that you think is extremely important that is not necessarily getting the coverage or the voice right now that is important to the advancement project. Sure, so uh, two things quickly. One is police free schools. We have a campaign and we have a website called we came to learn.com. There was just an assault on a young person in Osceola, Florida just yesterday, um, where a young girl was slammed to the floor by a sheriff's officer. And so that's one of the things we really have been pushing to get police out of our schools and get young people supports. And then the other thing that I would say is the rights restoration issue, right? We have an opportunity in the state of Virginia over the next few years to actually give people the right to vote permanently. Right now it is one of two states that still disenfranchises people for a lifetime unless the governor restores their voting rights. And so um, so we're gonna be working with our partners in Virginia to get that fixed so that people actually have a right to vote. Excellent, those sound like extremely important campaigns that are very invested in shaping and reshaping our communities. And so thank you so much for all that effort you put in. Uh, can you tell people where to find you online mm -hmm. in the event that they are looking to contribute or to learn more? Sure, so you can go to advancementproject.org uh, and you can find all about our programs there. And then of course you can follow us on Twitter and you can follow me on Twitter at jbrownsianis. Um, I love Twitter, so <laughs> please, please do, I would love that. Excellent, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.